Hi, this is Ed back again with another video for all my supporters. Thank you to everyone on Patreon, Steam it, and subscribe star for supporting my channel, of course. I have another video coming the day after tomorrow on the Monolith. If you heard about that, which Buzz Aldrin talked about a few years ago, we're going to just take some little looks at that and make some speculations for the next one so keep an eye out for that coming the day after tomorrow in this video we're going to go into a specific interesting thread of information and some background so what is happening here well i've talked a lot about to the stars academy and how there seems to be a lot now or at least a movement a slow uh steady speed that has increased in the drip of information and here we have an interesting thing in regards to a specific physicist who apparently, allegedly works at Lockheed Martin. So here on Reddit Conspiracy 8 hours ago, a few hours ago, and they named the staff a physicist there of Lockheed Martin, answered this question on quota. What are the most plausible explanations for the Navy pilots seeing hypersonic objects at 30,000 feet? This is in regards to these Nimitz uh, UFO events or the Tic Tac events with the Nimitz Aircraft Carrier Group and all that information which of course has been talked about by the New York Times etc. in 2017 and 2018 and has constantly stayed in the news cycle, been treated extremely seriously as also the subject of that documentary series on the History Channel by To The Stars Academy where they go into investigating investigating quote-unquote because obviously they already know what happens the Nimitz aircraft carrier sighting there with a Tic Tac UFO so it's interesting um, what's happening here because now we have this person posting this was posted on above top secret as well before I go into that specific individual that's been posting here on quota and answering that question what was their opinion well, take a guess. We just have to know that part of TV, To The Stars Academy, part of this background group is Steve Justice. Steve Justice was the director of integrated systems at Lockheed Martin Skunk Works. Okay, right up the top of the pyramid there in this place. He's part of To The Stars now. He retired and he's part of To The Stars. As soon as he retired, he went straight into To The Stars Academy. Okay, as part of this apparent... Uh, disclosure group. Now I know I've been going on about To The Stars quite a bit, I've talked about them in the past, but this the UFO question and what is the agenda behind the disclosure as well as what does the disclosure mean if it is real, is one of the most important questions of humanity. For me, if it is real, it explains nearly everything. It explains the trillions of dollars in, in laundering into these projects or at least what Catherine Austin Fitz says. It explains the creation of underground uh, cities or bunkers. According to her narrative, it explains nearly everything. It's all connected together when the world went awry straight after 1947. You can see the political leaders, or at least the intelligence community, seem to uh, go into a scramble and start building stuff. and started uh, really concentrating uh, on other things apart from the protection of their countries. So here's some of the credentials of the individual coming up. Now, here's some background. It is possible that this is all a hoax and someone else posting as this individual. I do not think that's the case. The reason why is you've got uh, dozens, dozens, maybe hundreds, I don't look back on, of answers to questions non-related to UFOs such as uh, you know, what are Neanderthals eat? A lot of things to do with archaeology answered by this individual here. And this account has been on the internet for a while. In fact, it's getting 83,000 views. 83,000 views a month. Overall, it's had 729,000 views. So if you're working for Lockheed Martin and you're getting that much views a month, then obviously Lockheed Martin knows that you are involved in answering questions. I mean, all you had to do was put in the person's name and it pulled up all of their question and answer sessions to all kinds of strange topics, mainly the scientific kind. So you would think if this was an impersonation, then there would be some lawyer or a bunch of lawyers for Lockheed Martin that say, take that account off the internet. So obviously this is a sanctioned account, okay? Uh, well, what I mean is it's a, an account that ha is allowed to happen, okay? There's a network there. 
uh, not a sanctioned account, maybe the wrong terminology there. So this is the individual on quota that is replying to everything and reply to that question there. They state by their profession, they are a specialist in aerodynamics and so on and so forth. They're particularly interested in uh, questions about, you know, uh, you know, pretty much, uh, you know, anthropological kinds of questions there. And they're also an amateur flint maker, which would explain why they're answering so many questions in regards to archaeology <coughs> and so on and so forth. Okay, Paleont uh, Paleolithic uh, things. Now, uh, they're also obviously an expert in physics. That's where they make their bread and butter. So a lot of people after the show Unidentified came on started obviously raising this question again because Unidentified is a very popular show. Done very well, I must add, in terms of how it's made, its filmmaking aspect, treated it extremely seriously. For the most part, I don't know what it means, and I don't know what the agenda is really behind all this, but uh, it is what it is. So here is the uh, question, and then we'll go into the answer here, at least a, uh, a partial read and a capsulization. So this person asks here, what are the most plausible explanations of Navy pilots seeing hypersonic objects at 30,000 feet, objects with no visible engine and sometimes described as a cube within a sphere? See link. They link to the CBS news story on Navy pilots uh, in regards to the New York Times uh, expose on those pilots. You know, sometimes you've got to look at the institutions putting this stuff out. They're all the same ones at the heights of the pyramid. It's amazing this wasn't on the subject for the Bilderberg Group. Them talking about disclosure. And would you believe it if it was? I don't know. Maybe I'm too cynical. So this person asking here, don't be naive and think that the three U.S. Nimitz uh, events are the only ones on the official books. And he's quoting official in quotation marks. Then he talks about Lou Alexandro there, the director of the government AATIP, ATIP is what they call it, has claimed there are hundreds of these incidents in the past which are not cleared for public release. But we needn't care. There are thousands of government records as disclosed via the Freedom of Information Act describing these craft with insane maneuverability as far back as the 1940s. And that's what I was saying in the video. You know, there are all these accounts back in the 1940s. And in fact, these uh, uh, reiterating the exact same account I talked about is the fact that they were called Foo Fighters. And he states, and I continue, so these advanced craft do exist. There is no question about it. Here's what we can say. Noting this technology has stayed somewhat are stagnant since the days of the Foo Fighters, UFOs in World War II. That's the biggest problem with the narrative that this is just government. Because you have so many accounts. Again, this could be fog of war. They could achieve this by getting people to say it back in the days. But it's not just the 1940s. It is the 15th uh, century Nuremberg woodcut. Okay? It is many accounts of the past and that woodcut from the 15th century there, I forgot the exact date, 1530 maybe, uh, it's hard to say, but that woodcut from Nuremberg was they describe triangular black craft crashing, they describe all these strange things in the sky with no apparent explosions or light, and the lights moving and comets and back then people knew what a comet, a comet was, a comet a comet was. They knew what a meteor looked like, a shooting star. These things stayed in the sky and moved around and displayed the same characteristics as classical examples of UFOs. So this person's giving the Foo Fighter example. Okay, they're stating there. Let's go on to the next part here as we move on to the rest of their answer. So someone has discovered, and these are their main bullet points of what, uh, what they are, Someone has discovered how to make right angle turns in all directions at supersonic speeds, speeds almost instantaneous acceleration from uh, rest and similarly almost in instantaneous deceleration from subsonic speeds to rest. So he's saying these can just move extremely fast and stop. Of course you are aware that these are all 
classical UFOs. These are examples he's talking about. Almost instantaneous, it may well appear instantaneous due to an altered metric tensor. tensor. Thus, the apparent time taken for a maneuver would not be the same for the occupants in the craft. Now, I'll just talk about some other more esoteric things in between these bullet points and pull out some uh, interesting things. What the what is known from well, what is speculated to within the uh, you know the may the UFO community is the fact that these are maybe if they are real anti gravity type uh, devices. Okay, in the essence, the gravity or the g forces that would be experienced outside this gravity field are not the same as inside, because otherwise the pilots themselves. Uh, whatever they are, unless they're made out of silicon or something, they would uh, literally be almost evaporated at these speeds. You know, the, the momentum would throw them around and you'd be dealing with a blender. But if the gravity and the momentum doesn't affect what's inside the craft and there's no g-force, then them moving at these super speeds would be the same as them standing still. There's no effect on them. So that is one thing that's speculated to. Thus someone has dis discovered, and he's stating here, how to migrate G-forces to a very large extent. A highly tra a trained pilot can withstand about 10 G, but the craft described by the military regul uh, regularly force their internal contents, occupants, if there are any, to experience hundreds of Gs. The US Nimitz UFO dropped from 28,000 feet to 50 feet in 0.78 seconds. So he's measured this, I guess. That is the reference, uh, you know, this is 10,900 uh, miles per second. The craft, the craft's other buddies, similarly sized, uh, sized capsules previously had dropped from 80,000 feet to 20,000 feet in a few seconds. So when you hear on the radar reports, uh, that yes, this craft was traveling on radar at 30,000, uh, you know, uh, miles an hour. They might be able to do all kinds of different things from that. That might just be their cruising speed. <clears throat> okay, this is, uh, you know, uh, pretty, pretty crazy stuff here in terms of speed. At the same time, these craft regularly glow in different colors. Red and green fiery balls were infamously known as Foo Fighters in World War II following their allies and access uh, uh, a fighter craft into the night. Thus the plasma field of their craft is a hint that indeed there is a lot of energy being produced by the craft since the particles are highly excited. We always hear about these UFOs being glowing in nature and extremely uh, you know, bright in the sky. Uh, and he's talking about a way of measuring the uh, energy attributes there is the same way as you look at fire. You know, a cooler burning fire is going to let out more kind of black smoke, burn at a, at a lower color, color temperature, whereas a high burning fire is going to burn at a, a higher uh, burning temperature, such as, uh, you know, uh, what you'd get out of a, a gas torch or something. Okay, so let's keep on going on here. So we go on here to the next panel. So this is an update as of June the 17th, 7th, uh, 2019. This is his previous reply until we updated uh, a few hours late, a few you know hours ago. This was uh, over a week ago, of course. And then he goes into some more of that information there is with the event itself, which you can uh, read on screen. So I thought I'd bring you this video because it does show another thing happening here which is an oddity. So now you have people from Lockheed and Martin just answering questions on the internet. Okay. That's highly irregular, by the way. That doesn't really happen. Okay. These people all have, you know, non-disclosure agreements the size of phone books. So someone probably had to tick off on this at Lockheed Martin and go, yeah, no, it's fine. Go for it. Um, again, Steve Justice talking about it as well. And he was running these entire programs. Uh, so again, yes, they said go for it. So all this stuff shows, including the video I did today, or you might have watched on my main channel today, in regarding Donald Trump. 
you know, getting a briefing is moving in a certain direction. Okay, it's moving in a certain uh, direction indeed. And uh, I don't know what the outcome of that will be. But if they address the UFO question, let's say they do address it, then they have to address the abduction question because those things are completely tied together. But it might take them a long time, maybe never, to get round to that question because that is a real, real big one. Thank you for all your support. Uh, stay tuned for my next video day after tomorrow when I go into that alien, well, called the monolith, at least as, uh, as Buzz Aldrin referred to it, the monolith there on one of uh, Jupiter's moons. I think it's Jupiter's moons. Uh, I can't remember. I'm still looking at it at the moment, but I haven't looked at it in detail. I have done videos on it in the far past, which I'm going to have to dig up. But I thought it was worth, worth mentioning because a lot of people look at that object and they say that's highly unusual. So it's really strange at the moment what's happening, of course. And I've got some other videos coming up, of course, that are not on the subject of UFOs. I thought it'd be just nice to stay with the track as I did uh, post uh, one other today and then my other patron video a few days ago which I mirrored on my main channel so people would uh, be able to understand the video I made today. Thank you all for your support. It would not be possible without you. Go out and do your own research. Decide for yourselves what to believe of course. Ask any questions you want in the comment section. In the meantime stay safe and I will see you all later.